Arbor Realty is the subject of a short seller report that was released on March 14th. Within a day of the release of the report, the stock price fell by more than 10%. So what are the claims of this report? How did Arbor Realty actually respond to it? Who's behind the report? And is this something we should be worried about? I recently released a video on Arbor Realty Trust, a mortgage REIT that provides financing for multifamily housing. They've been around since 2004, they survived the 2008 recession, and then went on to go through the 2020 pandemic without cutting their dividend. Everything was going quite nicely. And then on March 14th, Ninji Research released this report claiming that Arbor Realty is a fraud. Full disclosure, I am an investor in Arbor Realty Trust, ticker symbol ABR, so I wanted to know if there's an issue. Before we dive into the report, a quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just an investor sharing the research I do for my portfolio in the hope that it helps you with your own research. Here's the 43 page report, it's complicated and it's confusing and I think that's deliberate. So much so that if you skip down to the conclusion at the end of the report, well, there isn't one. The report just comes to an abrupt end and I think that's maybe because they assume that no one's actually going to read all the way to the end. But that's just my assumption. What's more important is that if you scroll through the entire document and look for the author of it, the person or people behind it, there's nothing to be found. I've never read a research report that doesn't have an author, so that's a red flag to me. Even though there's no conclusion at the end, there is an executive summary, or at least titled that way at the beginning, and it goes for four pages. It opens with an extremely long sentence that's actually just a list of eight of their claims, and then that's followed by, well, a prediction of how much the stock could fall, 52%. I guess that's an important thing to the author. Then they go on to list 30 separate bullet points in the executive summary. I'm obviously not going to go into detail about the full 43 pages of the report because that would wind on for hours. So let me just highlight a few choice items that I think you might find interesting. As we go through the executive summary, you can see references to fake holding companies. If the portfolio had been consolidated, Arbor would have been insolvent in 2011. That sounds pretty serious. Missing cash will lead to a rude awakening in the future. The author's sounding a bit disgruntled there. Fake revenue, I'm not sure that's a technical term. And there's some comments about Ernst & Young failing as Arbor's auditor. Well, already this is looking less than professional as research reports go. Let's move beyond the executive summary. They go on to describe Arbor Realty as a so-called mortgage REIT. Well, there's nothing so-called about them. Arbor Realty is definitely a mortgage REIT. The report accuses the revenue generated by interest from escrow accounts as being fake. And here's another gem of a quote. The most important point is that by doctoring its financials for years and claiming its superiority in comparison to its peers, Arbor's near future will be a rude awakening. The repeated use of the phrase rude awakening is starting to sound to me like a manifesto. Well, it's easy to poke fun at the grammatical errors and the poorly written commentary. And I do think those are red flags, but what about the specific claims? Well, there are a lot of claims and to go into analyzing those and refuting them in detail would take weeks, if not longer. And I think that's the point. This is just my opinion, but I think the report is constructed to create fear and doubt and most of all, confusion. Anybody who reads this report for more than five or 10 minutes is going to be utterly confused. Here's Arbor Realty's response to the release of this report. Arbor Realty Trust announced today that the company is in receipt of the purported research report that was published earlier today by Ninja Research, a short seller of Arbor stock. The report lacks merit and contains numerous inaccuracies, misstatements, and otherwise misleading allegations. This false and inflammatory report is a transparent effort to mislead the public for the purpose of enabling Ninji and its affiliates to profit from short positions on Arbor stock. Contrary to this report, Arbor is committed to maintaining its books and records in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles in the United States and adhering to the highest standards of corporate governance and, and internal controls. I think putting the word research in quotes was a nice touch. One question that's popped up in forums a lot is, should Arbor release a more specific response to these allegations? So I don't think that's necessarily a great idea because first of all, it would take a tremendous amount of resources. The report is so lengthy and so complicated 
that it would take probably weeks to produce a report that would be at least as long as this report. In other words, another 40 pages. And perhaps I'd consider doing that if I was Arbor, if the allegations came from a credible source and therefore it would be necessary to respond in some way or form. But in this case, the author of the report isn't really very credible. In fact, instead of saying not credible, it's more accurate if I just say that the author of the report is simply unknown. Here's Ninji's website. If you click on About Us, there's, well, no biographies to establish credibility. Whatever Ninji is, it's only about one year old. There's no address. We don't know what country they're from. I'm guessing they're not from the United States. There are no corporate entities to look up and there are no people to reference. And there are yet more grammatical errors to be found on their website, including in their disclaimer, which is usually written by attorneys. So that's an odd place to find an error. I think the release of this report was carefully timed to coincide with the fear in the market that is related to banking, finance, and lending in general. Ninji does disclose that they're a short seller and that they have the potential to profit from the price of a stock going down. And no better time to release a report like this than when the market is already on a downward slide because of the banking crisis. Personally, I decided not to sell my ABR stock because I don't give any credibility to the report or the author, whoever they may be. But of course, that's just my decision and I wouldn't tell you what to do with your money. And the last thing I'll say on this topic is that the report came out on March 14th. On March 15th, one day later, the CEO of Arbor Realty, Ivan Kaufman, bought just over $100,000 of ABR stock. Interesting. So that wraps up my thoughts on this short seller report. We'll get back to the more regular format of talking about stocks, funds, dividends, and income in the next video. More armchair income coming soon.